And a new study is raising concerns about a possible link between autism and antidepressants. The research is published in the American Medical Association journal Pediatrics. It finds pregnant women taking antidepressants in the second and third trimesters face nearly double the risk of delivering a child who will be diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Our Dr. Tara Narula is with us. Tara, good morning. Good morning, Nora. So how high is the risk? Right. So we know that 13% of American pregnant women take antidepressants. And the research before has been been very conflicting in terms of whether there was this link to autism spectrum disorder. In this study, it was a large study that took place in Canada of 145,000 infants, and they followed them over about six years. And they did, in fact, find an association between women who took antidepressants in the second and third trimester and an increased relative risk of about 87% of having a child with autism spectrum disorder. Now, I want to point out that we're talking about relative risk. That means if the general risk is about 1%, you've now increased it to 1.87 percent. These are small numbers overall, so people should not panic. So 98 percent of pregnant women on antidepressants did not have an increased risk. What specific type of antidepressants are we talking about? We're talking specifically about the SSRI class, which are things like Zoloft, Lexapro, Celexa, Prozac. The, Prozac. These medications are the most frequently prescribed antidepressants for pregnant women. And essentially, we know that they cross the placenta, they cross the fetal blood-brain barrier, and and they, they work by altering the levels of serotonin in the brain. Serotonin is important because it can cause cell division. It can assist with cell division, cell differentiation, how the neurons migrate or move, and also how those neurons form connections. So it's not unreasonable to think we could be changing postnatal development with this. Could it be something else other than the depressant, Absolutely. like the chemistry of the brain? That's a really important point. And you know, this type of study is not a cause and effect. It's observational. We can't conduct the type of studies where we put one woman on one drug and another one and follow what happens. That would be unethical. So what we do is look for associations, but that means there's lots of other things that can confound the picture. For instance, is it just depression alone that caused this risk? We don't know what the severity of depression was of the women in this study. We know that they filled their prescriptions for antidepressants, but we don't know if they were taking them. We don't know what else was going on in their lifestyle. Did they smoke? Were they obese or overweight? Did they have other medical or psychiatric conditions? All of these things could have played in. Are we learning more about what causes autism? I think we're learning more that, again, these changes, whether it's genetic, environmental, all these things may be starting much, much earlier than the child is diagnosed. So prenatal, certainly that period of time is a critical window where things may be happening to affect it. It's important to point out, though, that, you know, this isn't a reason for people to panic and stop their medication. Untreated depression can be severe and can cause a lot of problems both for the mother, the child, and the whole family. So it's a very difficult decision that needs to be weighed with the mother, the psychiatrist, and the OB-GYN. Mm -hmm. Yeah, weigh the benefits and the risks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Terranula. Thank you. Good to see you.